And here we are. Here we are. I can still see people joining. Sam's now here as well. A few other people are uh, are joining as we speak. Do us a massive favour, guys. Uh, I've not got any slides tonight because I'm going to play you some uh, cool audio instead. Share this for me. Let's try and get as many people um, to watch this as possible. All you need to do is just hit the three buttons at the top of the, the three little dots at the top of your, uh, the bottom of your screen. Thank you. I can see all the shares coming through, and then uh, retweet it on um, on Twitter. Get it out on Facebook. Um, not just for myself, but for Lewis. Okay, we need to get as many people watching Broadchurch tonight as possible. Hipsters here. Simon, not seeing you in a while, mate. How are you doing, buddy? Um, I missed a call from you today. I think I'll uh, I'll sort that out later, though. I'll make sure I listen to your uh, to your message. Um, look at all these people sharing it. Thank you so much. This is um, this is great. And also, I'm going to be showing at the end of this tonight as well a short film from Lewis that he really wants eyeballs on that he's made recently. Um, it's only very, very short. It's about two minutes long, uh, but I'm going to show you uh, that at the end of this. So, guys, what's happening tonight is basically I have been over the last few weeks. You know, occasionally on a Monday night, I'll do this a phone call with Periscope, basically. Previous guests have been Julie Hesmondhalsh, awesome actress. We had Rob James Collier on. Got lots of guests lined up. But I like to kind of make them current so that there's a reason why I've got the guest on. So for Julie Hesmondhalsh, for instance, um, she stars in Broadchurch at the moment. She plays the character Trish, who the main story is about. And I thought, well, you know what? Let's give her a ring a few hours before she debuts in episode one. And we'll see what it feels like for her. And then I thought today, well, you know what? Lewis's episode airs tonight, the episode that he's directed. Um, let's get him on because I think it's different from an actor's perspective. I don't know about you, but whenever I've got a show going out, I'm pretty nervous the day that it's going out. And normally I won't even watch it live. I'll like get myself off to the gym or something like that. And I'll be like, oh, I'm just going to kind of you know stay out of the way for a bit and I'll, I'll watch it and catch it when I get back. So I thought I'm going to give Lewis a ring today. And just see if for directors what that's like, you know, whether he has the nerves. Because effectively, he's working with the biggest artists and the biggest budgets in UK TV, you know, the best crew. I'm like, do you get nervous? I mean, obviously, he's seen it, he's edited it, um, you know, he's locked it off and he's gone, right, there you go. I'm happy with that. But does he still get nervous? What's it like for him? Um, So I thought I'm going to give him a ring. It's completely unscripted, had no idea really what we were going to talk about, what we were going to discuss. Um, had a conversation for about 25 minutes. I've recorded it for you guys um, and I'm going to play it out now. We can all have a listen. I'll jump back on afterwards. We'll have a little chat. I'm going to play you Lewis's short film. Please stay on to the end of this because I've, I've promised I'm going to get as many eyeballs on his film as I can. Um, and then you'll be able to share that film as well. Um, and let's, you know, let's spread, spread the good word. You're going to hear in this phone call... All about Lewis's uh, experience with Broadchurch, how he feels about it now. Um, you're also going to hear about his new upcoming project, which starts casting in June. So you're really going to want to know about that. If you drop off before that and you're an actor, you're stupid. Um, because this is a brand new drama that he's working on that he's developing. He's not just directing it, he's actually developing it with Sheridan Smith as the lead. It's going to be huge. Sounds right up my street as well. It's about a topic that I have a lot of experience with in a not particularly good way. Um, and then after that, yeah, I'm going to play the film and then um, and then we'll call it a day before nine o'clock so everyone can actually go and watch Broadchurch in the, uh, if you're in the UK anyway. Um, so if you're ready... Let's have a look. I'm just going to look at the questions. If you've got any questions before I start, because I'm not going to be able to answer questions during this, guys. I'm going to play you this call. I'm not going to be able to speak whilst this is playing. So if you've got any questions beforehand, say them now. If not, I'm going to play the uh, I'm going to play the call. But I'll just give you like 30 seconds to get anything uh, anything across that I can answer for you. Um, but it's about a 20 minute phone call. Um, and yeah, just listen. And like I say, I won't be able to like speak to you during it. But if you've got any questions about what's going on during it, I can still read the questions. So you can still type them in, and then I will, um, I will, uh, you know, be able to. I'll write them down. I'll be able to answer them afterwards. I have to run. Will it be posted online to catch up with? If it all records properly, hipster, it should be. But I can't promise you. But I'll try my best to get a recording of this up, um, at least on the podcast on the Acts on This TV audio experience. And Caroline's asking about the Sheridan Smith thing. So Sheridan Smith is starring in Lewis's next drama. It's called Clean um, Clean Break. And um, we talk about it in this phone call. So listen out and you'll be, able to hear, uh, you'll be able to hear more about that. So hopefully, if technology is working properly, um, I'm going to play this for you now, guys. Keep the hearts coming through. Keep the questions coming through. And I'll talk to you again on camera in about 20 minutes-ish. All right? Enjoy this. <laughs> Hey, 
Hey, Ross, how you doing? Lewis, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, good, thank you. Very good. I'm good, I'm good. It's a beautiful, sunny afternoon here in Manchester, and I'm just basically sat in front of my computer. So I thought, you know, if I need sunshine indoors, because I can't get out, who do I ring? Lewis Arnold, he'll bring the sunshine. I, lo- I like the idea of being, yeah. The sunshine man. Sunshine, good, isn't it? Indoors. Um, so, Lewis, I do this, right? Basically, um, you will be... We're recording this, like, at what? At half past one in the afternoon. But this is going to be going out live tonight, just before your episode of The Mighty Broad Church. Episode six, series three, the one that you have directed. We spoke about it a little bit on the podcast I did with you a couple of months ago. Um, but we didn't go into too much depth because I guess back then it was also secretive. No one knew anything about the storyline and you know you couldn't really uh, divulge any of that. I want to know like what it's like for you as a director. Like, How do you feel before like a piece of your work goes out? Because as actors, I'm shitting myself at this point going, oh my God, how is it going to be received? Is it, what, if, what if I'm, you know, I, I'm not very good? Am I going to be all right? Will people think I'm all right? And normally it's all fine. But like, how do you feel? It, it kind of varies uh, job to job. Generally, you know, yes, all, everything you've said that an actor feels, I think we as directors feel. Um, but it depends. I think as a director, because you've been through the process, particularly towards the back end, you know, you've seen the episode, you know, a hundred times and you've watched it come together with, you know, music and sound, the grades, you know, you've seen the online you know what you've got, really. You know whether you're happy with it or not. I suppose as an actor, it's more nerve-wracking because, you know, you kind of do your performance on the day. You might see a few snippets in ADR, but for you, it's the first time you're experiencing your performance and the world of, uh, you know, around your performances, the scenes you weren't involved in, the story around your character for the first time. But as a director, we we kind of know what, what, what we've got and what we're delivering and what's about to be watched. The nerves come from, with anything, I suppose, with, with um, how people are going to accept it and if people are going to enjoy it, because that's just something, we, a variable we just can't predict. Um, so my, my nerves, I'm excited. I mean, I'm a huge fan of the show before I was even involved. So I'm kind of, I've been watching it, uh, you know, I've been watching it with Louise over the last couple of weeks, um, you know, and she doesn't know, I haven't told her anything. So that, that's been quite fun. Um, but we're huge fans of the show. And, and so I'm kind of really excited, but at the same time, yeah, the, the nerves are there. The nerves are definitely there. Um, and I will sort of like be checking Twitter as it's sort of on. I was just going to say, are you going to be sat watching? I would do exactly the same. You're going to be sat looking for the hashtags. I'll make sure everyone who's listening to this, right? Okay. There's potentially 15,000 people listening to this. All make sure you tweet. Give him some like positive, like make him feel <laughs> no, great. I <laughs> It's really funny, like, when we, that last, the last show that went out, Humans, the stuff that I kind of, like, laughed at and retweeted was kind of like, because, like, you don't, I don't take what people say on Twitter to heart, and you just use it to gauge kind of the general consensus, but you don't ever take that kind of feedback to heart, because Twitter is just kind of like, you just, like, verbal diarrhea, whatever's right in front of your head at that point, point. and also, people are Twittering, they're not really paying attention to the episode, so those kind of comments i find fun so i always find myself retweeting the negative comments or the funny i like funny comments like uh it was pretty good ones on humans um you know that the, if the, if it makes me laugh whether it's good or bad they they kind of I, I generally like to retweet those to the cast and crew um just because yeah it just kind of makes it funny really but um but i just kind of watch twitter just to get a general consensus i mean the big thing that i look out for are the reviews and again you know the reviews the next day but more importantly it's like the feedback from people that matter so you know the execs and the people that i work with the people that i've worked with that might not necessarily have worked with me on broadchurch so you know other dops i've worked with and other exec producers like nicola at red or you know clerk and well or new pictures you know just just to hear what they think because they're in the business so those are the kind of opinions that matter but twitter's good fun me, good me fun. as well mainly i mean obviously i know you're waiting for that text to let you know what i think yeah. that's a big one <laughs> But Ross, you're just a ray of positivity. I don't think you would ever ring me up and go, loved it. But, you know, that, that, that one scene, it needed this, it needed that. You know, it didn't quite land here. You're just a ray of, a ray of positivity. As this is what I say, Lewis. I say, listen, we've got to make positivity louder because it's like the world does enough of making negativity louder, you know, so we've got to work harder, particularly in this industry, just to make positivity louder because um, people are too quick to want to slag off stuff or moan or whinge about stuff and how unfair things are and I didn't get this, I didn't get that. So yeah, you know, someone's got to got to just be there, basically uh, shouting for some positive stuff. Um, so who are we? This is quite a difficult one for you. This who 
are we looking out for tonight? Are you like, you know what, they really shine in this? You know, is it Olivia Coleman? Is it Julie Hesmanel? She's just amazing anyway. Is it David Tennant? Charlie Higson's, you know, up pretty awesome. Who who kind of like for you, if you can say without feeling bad, who you like, they nailed it in this set? Look, I mean, I think Broadchurch is one of those shows where we're absolutely blessed with just a phenomenal cast. So all of them are incredible. You know, the entire ensemble, and it is an ensemble, you know, really, really hit the ground running and just deliver you know, on every scene. Um, you know, the only thing worth saying, because I don't think there is one before, you know, one performance stronger than the other. I think all the actors are really great and, you know, I have to say that in a way, but I genuinely mean it in this case. But, you know, in this episode, you will get a little bit more, which I can say because it's in all of the press that's gone out this week, you will get a little bit more of Lenny's character. So there's an opportunity for Lenny to shine or have his moment within the, the, this episode. And then obviously I've got some um, some stuff with Andy Buckham, um, which is really interesting and was a real privilege and joy to direct given how much of a fan I am of series one and, and the story of Beth and Mark Latimer. So, um, so, you know, those two characters have a little bit more of a spotlight on them in this episode, but you know, like the whole thing hangs on the fact it's an ensemble piece, you know, um, and, you know, David and Olivia are just phenomenal. Um, uh, you know, there's also, there's, there's a, uh, and there's a scene, uh, there's, a, there's a guest performance actually from, um, from, from an actress called uh, Eleanor who comes in and she, I can't say anything about her because it's a bit of a surprise, but she just gives a standout performance. Yeah, everybody that comes in just smashes it and yeah, it's hard to pin, pin performance specifics really. It's, uh, no, it's good. It's had me guessing the whole time. Like, and this is what, honestly, mate, as well. This is like, this is testament for you because my mum is like the biggest TV critic in the world. Like, she loves this absolutely. Like, she loved, she loved series one. She didn't, she wasn't too keen on series two. Series three, she's like, oh my god, this is like right up there. Like, she's literally glued to it every single week. Will not miss it. So he's very much looking forward to tonight as well. She's like the harshest critic, critic ever. So. If you've pleased her, then I'll let you know what she thinks, basically. Yeah, Forget that's the one. Else. Just, yeah. Te- just, yeah, just text me and let me know if your mum's happy. <laughs> I'm sure she'll be uh, she'll be over the moon. What else is kind of like anything else that you can you can talk about? You're going on. What, how are you doing with Clean Break? That the, the, it's a new drama that you're actually developing. You're not just directing this. You're actually part of the development process. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So um, Mark Marlow, who's the writer and the creator, came came to me about a year and a half ago with with the idea and um, and, a, and a pilot and um, and basically yeah he, he sort of shopped it around and then but it hadn't got picked up and he wanted to develop it and try and package it and so we developed it for you know six months and then we took it to Jane Featherstone and uh, we were really fortunate that she was in a place where she just was trying to set up sister and. Um, she just really bought into Mark and the idea and the, the lead character, which will be played by Sheridan Smith, which is just a, an incredibly rich and exciting character. And um, yeah, she picked it up and she just took, you know, Jane and sister and, and Katie and sister, they just kind of took it to the next level really and really helped us develop it and push it through. And then we, yeah, ITV picked it up when when I was filming Broadchurch, actually. I remember I was doing, doing a scene and I got a call from Jane to say that ITV had, had uh, won it and wanted to meet us and, and sort of wanted the show. So we start prep full time in July at the moment we just we've got two scripts and we're just working on the third um yeah and it's going really well it's uh, it's it's great it's a great it place like to be an awesome story so it's about so Sheridan plays a cleaner effectively in a in a place is is she in a stock market like a, in in within a building in the yeah, Canary I, Wharf and then decides she's going to get into I, trading yeah i mean i have to basically be, i'm not sure what i can and can't say at this stage but i know i know the press release kind of gave the hook i mean yeah. the hook of the show is basically you know cleaner in canary wharf down on her luck beaten by the system basically figures out that if she bugs the offices that she cleans she can get tips on the stock exchange market and essentially become an inside trader so she's basically cheating you know the system that essentially has pushed her down you know when mark bought me the idea you know i absolutely love the character you know sam is such a rich character and jane and katie and now emma and chris who have come on board as sister you know just helped elevate it even more and i think I think it, hopefully it will be something really special. And I think we're blessed to have Sheridan involved 
yeah, and we start casting properly, I suppose, you know, from July onwards and build a, a really great team around her. And yeah, we're really looking forward to it, you know. Um, Mark's a superb writer, and yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about it, really. It's, it's, it's I'm sounds, really excited sounds about amazing. It. I've not told you about the time where I nearly lost my entire livelihood on the stock market, have I? Um, no. Oh, it was, it, I mean, like literally nearly everything. I mean, seriously, I'm not even, not even joking. I went on a game show. It's one for another time, probably, but I went on a game show, right? And I won 51 grand, Lewis, right? And I thought, this is my opportunity to make some serious money. It was just as the banks crashed in 2008, 2009. To cut a long story short, um, I effectively lost all of it bar 300 quid until one fateful morning wow. where it all came back and two grand there was no reason for this bounce there's a lot of like insider weird stuff going on it was probably a character very much like sam doing her uh her thing on the stock exchange the share bounced right back um and i checked on it and i was actually two thousand pounds up um by the time i had managed to sell um they went into what's called the negotiated trade where basically the stock market go why do you want to sell so many shares so quickly so it had to go to like a manual process and i came out 700 pounds down that was it i was like it's the best 700 pound i've ever lost in my life i was like thank the lord i've got my house deposit back <laughs> and yeah uh, i will never ever do it again but um but i what love every, what everyone wants to know is what game show were you on? oh well i was on a game show basically noel edmonds took a week off on channel four and he um, he gave Nick Hancock a game show called uh, um, uh, Win My Wage. And there were seven people out in front of you. And you had to basically, you didn't hear any of them speak. Or I remember like it. Oh, I remember you? it. Oh. Yeah, I remember it. You had to guess who won the, who earned the most money. Yeah, you had to guess what, the, yeah, what their wage was, essentially. Yes, that's, I remember it. Yeah, it was, long, it was on for longer than a week. It's uh, oh, is it? Well, maybe maybe it came back, but it was just like a week long run when I went on it. But absolutely smashed it, and I'll tell you why. Because what they did is they dressed them all the same. Every 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 contestant, they dressed them in a black top uh, with their name on it. But they let them wear their own shoes and their own socks, and they also let them keep jewelry on. So I just spotted a slightly older man. I could tell he had Paul Smith's socks on. He had a tag watch and some nice shoes. I was like, unless they're fake. He's, he's a pretty big earner. 51K. Thank you very much. I'll take that. That's amazing. And they nearly lost it all in the space of four years. but That's a story and a half. Well, if, you, you know, if, you, if you're struggling for another episode, then we can, we can make a semi-biopical piece. Unfortunately, I'm up to my eyeballs in bloody stuff. Cheats and inside uh, trading. And, <laughs> and, and, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's good fun. You know, and it's not a negative spin on the financial district. You know, I would want to be clear to point out that it's not... You know, this isn't a piece that's, you know, pointing the finger at completely at Canary Wharf or inside trading or if uh, it's much more of a character piece which happens to inhabit a certain world. So hopefully, yeah, it'll be on your screens next year, next year. Yeah, no, it sounds fascinating, mate. <laughs> I, I, uh, I love stuff like that. So to, um, to wrap up, you know, you said that I'm proactive. I see you one of the most hardworking people in this in this industry and kind of just actually going and getting what you want and not waiting for permission. Your actions are congruent with what you say you want, where a lot of actors' actions are not congruent with what they say they want. They say they're desperate for this career, they really want it, it's they're born to do it, it's all they've ever wanted, it's the only thing they can do. And yet their actions just aren't congruent to that. They they don't they're not going to, to bed every night with the tank empty. You know, they're not trying to put everything into getting themselves out there and getting seen. What do you do to keep yourself <laughs> focused and kind of like with that motivation to keep continually just nailing it your name just pops up all over the place and you're always doing uh, good stuff to be honest i'm driven by other people's successes i think i get really happy for like my friends and you know i have a good pool of directors who from the nfts but also beyond who you know i go for drinks with and who i speak to regularly and i get really happy for whenever they have a success but it also kind of motivates you. And I suppose it's the same with acting. I, I literally just finished a, a four-week course with some, some really great actors, actually, from the Actors Ascend group, which we did over four weeks. And what the best thing about that was the network they built together as a group. And, you know, they've got WhatsApp groups and Facebook groups, so they're always talking to each other. And I think from that, you kind of, you thrive off the other successes of the people around you. And I've just been blessed that I've kind of, grew up at the NFTS with incredibly talented filmmakers and beyond, you know, filmmakers outside the NFTS like Will McGregor or Luke Snellin. And, you know, you kind of look at what they're up to and it kind of motivates you to keep going, to be better. You never kind of, you know, you're never happy. And then also, you know, I think also, the lot, you know, I have lofty ambitions, you know, of what I want to do and where I want to go. And 
you know, this year has been great, you know, in regards to getting clean break off the ground. And there's another show called Des that I'm working on with, with a writer, which is, uh, which, which I'm really excited about as well. And kind of keen to get that off the ground. And I don't know. I just, I just, I'm, I love what I do. And if I'm not doing it, then I'd be very unhappy. So I keep doing it, which kind of leads me on to a shameless plug, actually, if you don't mind. Dude. No, do it. Go but, for um, it. I've been wanting to do it for years. So for three years, I've wanted to make this little short film. And I hadn't got the money and I hadn't got the time. The and football? Was it the football year, one? Or was that the Yeah. One? And then, no, that's it. Yeah. And then in, in January this year, I, I decided that I'd kind of just got to bite the bullet and, and do it. And so, you know, put my own money on the table, got a group of, you know, an incredible group of 22 actors together who weren't just there to be in it, you know, because it wasn't, a, you know, it wasn't a piece on performance, really. They were there because they wanted to get involved and, you know, because of their passion or love for football. And, you know, lots of them I'd come across on, on my journey myself. But, you know, Dan Gillings and Andy Knott, so, you know, two key people who really brought together more people than I knew, you know, than I knew. And then I just made this little film and, and, funny, and, you know, we've been trying to get it out there as much as possible. So if anyone has any time, you know, when they finish this, this, this live um, stream, you know, if you do go on Vimeo or go online or go on my website and, you know, give Sunday Sunday a little watch and a little push, to be, you know, be really grateful because it was one of those ones that, you know, not everyone did it. All the fantastic crew and the cast did it for no money. Um, you know, all of us did it as a showreel piece or something we believed in. It's by a football poet or a poet who does a lot of football poetry as well called Dennis Just Dennis, who plays the goalkeeper in green. My dad's the referee. My best man is the one of the goalkeepers. You know, a lot of the actors are my friends, you know, the DOP is one of my best friends, Alfie Biddle. You know, it's produced by my accomplice who, with Jamie and Jen, who've been phenomenally supportive. It's just, I just, you know, we just want to get it out there as much as possible because we, we all believe passionately in that we've produced something we're very proud of and that we think, you know, could do well out there. So, yeah, you know, if you don't mind, just a quick shameless plug to say, no, yeah, of if anyone's course, got a chance to watch I'll... and retweet, there is no financial gain to be made here. We just want as many people to see it and share it, particularly for Dennis, the, the poet, who is such a lovely man and such a, a talent, you know, um, kind of really want as many people to see it and to be aware of his work as possible. Do you want me to play it live? I can play it now to everybody who's watching and they will all see it right now. I can push video live out. I can just download it from your Vimeo channel. Do it. Get it out there. Everybody watch it. And if you don't like it, tweet me, but be funny and I'll retweet you. <laughs> if you don't like it, you've got to be hilarious. Um, yeah, well, that's amazing. I will um, yeah, I will play that at the end of this broadcast, mate, for everybody um, so that we've all seen it. Yeah, amazing. Great. And thank you for watching. I mean, like, like I say, it's just one of those ones where, you, you know, I, it, every now and again in, in this industry, you were reminded about the warmth and generosity of, of people and crews. And, you know, it was a, a no-budget thing that I made with a massive cast of, of 22 people not all of them were actors, like I said, my dad was in it and stuff, which was lovely. But it, it, I, it was probably the most emotional I've been in a long time, being on set and realising that all these people that had said they'd come for two days for no money and, you know, not even for travel. They just turned up on their own back with their football boots, you know, and gave their time. And, you know, it's an incredible feeling to have 22, you know, talented actors turn up just, you know, just for the love of... of 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 what they do and kind of made me really sort of um yeah it made me realize you know there's a lot of love and warmth out there for, for our industry and it's it, you know i just want to try and give back you know to these guys as much as possible so it wasn't just a waste adventure and try and get as many people as i can to see it anyway so thank you so much for those that do sort of hang about and watch it amazing well uh yeah make sure you uh you watch this guys and then yeah and then tweet tweet lewis it's um at lewis a e a on uh on twitter so let him uh, let him know what you think amazing mate well thank you cheers for this i mean this is this is warmth and generosity you basically just jumped on the phone with me for uh you know to do a favor for me so i appreciate this it's always a pleasure i uh look forward to checking out Broadchurch, and we'll all give you some tweets let you know what we think later on i, I like i said I'm, I'm nervous but you know um when you're working with the team on Broadchurch, you know, uh, everybody's on their A game. So when you watch it, I think there's a lot of people that are, don't get any attention, you know, away from the directors and Chris, who's phenomenal, and Jane. You know, there's a lot of people that produced it. Dan Winch was phenomenal. My first AD was phenomenal. Ray, who did the costumes. The whole team is just absolutely incredible. The grip, Carlos Catalan, the DOP. So, you know, um, there's a lot of people out there, you know, that, uh, who I've got a lot of love for who need that rec recognition. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, like yeah, if if you love it, it's not just because uh, you know, it's not just because of me. There is an absolute 
a uh, load of talent out there that make this show possible. So, yeah, look out for them. They're all on Twitter. Loads of those different crew members are all on Twitter and stuff. So, yeah, make sure you give them a follow and a like. That's what it's all about. Well, yeah, thank you so much. I'll uh, I'll know that catch up with you again soon, dude. Yeah, wicked. And thanks for everyone for listening. Like, yeah, um, I'm sure lots of people have dropped off because I have a habit of just waffling on. But, yeah, thank you very much. So, no worries. I'll get off and, uh, and play um, Sunday Sunday. Great. Thanks, mate. Cheers, bud. Pleasure, dude. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers, Lewis. Bye. Bye for now, mate. So there you go, guys. What do you think? Um, let me know what your uh, what your takeaways were from that conversation. What an awesome guy! Give me some hearts if you think uh, Lewis Arnold is a uh, is a quality person. Um, he's just a top top bloke, and um, that was actually pretty cool. Says somebody there. Well, thank you very much, top bloke. Says Steve. Still here. Says Susanna. Susanna's here. Excellent. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, lovely guy. Says Dawn. Seems like a nice, genuine guy. It's super genuine. And did you see, remember like a couple of weeks? Oh, it's Archie. All right, Archie. Here he is. Um, do you see um, what I said a few weeks ago about people, you know, there's too many people in this industry who were too fancy too early on. Like these actors who have done nothing, who, are, who join these groups on Facebook are like a lynch mob and go after people because they're not paying. You know, they're like, I'm not working for free. Oh, this is terrible. I shouldn't be asked to work for free. What did Lewis just say then? You know, Lewis is directing the biggest TV in the UK, some of the biggest TV in the world, and is an advocate of people mucking in and doing stuff and helping each other create great things. And, you know, the people in his film, Sunday, Sunday, that I'm going to play you now, didn't get paid, didn't get any travel. They did it for the love of doing it. And you'll see, you know, have come out. They've made a great piece of film here. Um, and people need to realise that you've all joined. We've all we're all part of an industry, guys. Where unfortunately, the the supply of actors far outstrips the demand. Literally, like in any other industry, you would go into, you know, it's, the demand for the service is going to be, you know, at least in a slightly uh, less bias ratio. Than, than, than it is in the acting industry. You know, there's 100,000 actors in the UK and like, you know, 1,000 jobs a year or whatever. Um, so, of course, occasionally you're going to have to do stuff for free. But I guarantee you, give me some hearts if you'd be in one of Lewis's films for free. Because I know you would. Um, but I know a lot of people would be like, oh, I'm not working for free. Oh, this is so terrible. Well, you know what? Why don't you just do one, never work, never have any success and moan for the rest of your life? Um because that's what happens when you basically do not give in this industry. So Lewis is one of the most giving. People are saying they would maybe say she would pay him. Uh, I think a lot of people would. I'd be in a film for free, says Archie. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's interesting. I think a lot of people would probably pay uh, pay to work with Lewis. Um, I think it's really, really, really true though. You get out of this industry what you put in, guys. You really do, honestly. And you can either be addicted to the struggle and be part of these Facebook groups that are like after like just. I don't know, like I say, a lynch mob, you know, after basically just persecuting everybody who doesn't want to pay them equity raise. Or you can actually go, I'm going to ignore all that stuff and I'm just going to actually work with people I want to work with, enjoy myself and let's see where we can take this. Um, love how he thrives on other success. We need more people in the world like this. Well, this is what people don't get. This is this is thriving on other people's success is an absolute trait of any successful person that I know. You know, it's something that I try and absolutely, you know, kind of like, well, advocate all the time because... This is how people want to be around you. People will want to, if you can celebrate other people's success, um, then people will help you out way more than if you're just bitching me on the back and, oh, they don't deserve that. They, you know, oh, how did he get that? I'm well better at that, you know, acting than him. I can't believe he's on the TV, she's on the TV, all this kind of stuff. But no one wants to be around that at all. And when you can, when you can um, celebrate someone else's success, it means you, you well, ultimately, in a, from a psychological perspective, you have what's called a growth mindset. So you believe that there's an unlimited amount of success out there. So, for instance, you know, I can say, see Lee here saying, yeah, yeah, totally agree. Um, and um, that's, you know, so I, I would go, okay, well, Lee's got a job. Someone with a fixed mindset would go, oh, okay, that means that there's one less job out there for me. So say there's 100 units of success in the world, that's all there is. Oh, my God, Lee's just took 10 of them now. Now there's only 90 of them left for me. Then Phil gets a job. Oh, my God, there's only 80 left. You know, Caroline gets a job. Um there's only 70 left and then you feel all that pressure, that overwhelm um, and then you are jealous and envious and just a bitter person about other people's success. When you realise there's an infinite amount of success out there and we can be happy for each other and you have a duty to be happy for each other um, because let's face it, you know, fighting over acting gigs is a very first world problem, isn't there, these days when you look at actually what's going on in the world, whether you're working or not, ultimately, you know, you're probably all right if you're in the UK or the US. Um, 
so you've got to be appreciative of uh, of what you've got and just give seriously open your arms to the world the world will open its arms to you um give 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 with no expectation um since i started doing that three four five years ago um i've never had more abundance in my life it spurs me on says caroline because i think i was in a class with them and now they're on 24 amazing someone's on 24 that's the difference between those who work for fame and money and those who work for the love of it i think you need a mix of both you know you've got to obviously survive you've got to live um, so there has to come a point where you go, this is a business, you know, and you've got to always look at your your career as a business. But in businesses, there's a lot of people who initially invest for free, in whether that's time, you know, effort, you know, equipment, all this kind of stuff. You know, you don't have to look at things transactionally um, as in like, if I put this in, what am I going to get out? Because sometimes you don't know what you're going to get out, but there's sometimes the very best moments where you're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe what's just happened. You know, we didn't think this was going to go as far as it's gone, but um, look how... Uh, you know, look how much success we've had with this thing. Um, and a lot of people have done that with short films that have had huge success at film festivals and they just thought it was going to be something they just did as a passion project and they ended up actually going on um, to have some serious success and then getting a lot of really high-profile jobs off the back of that. So you just never quite know, do you? You've got to be savvy, you know, you don't give away your time and say yes to everything. You, you can't do that because you're going to inevitably say no to something by saying yes to something else. Um, but you've just got to uh, trust your gut. Trust your Andy Pryor, top casting writer, so cast Doctor Who. He listened to a podcast on Ats on This TV I did with him. His main message was trust your gut. You know your instinct knows. Um, always says thanks even when you don't get the gig. Says Susanna. Um, and you can't say yes to everything. Says Archie. No, you can't. You absolutely, uh, you absolutely can't. What you can say yes to is watching Lewis's film now, Sunday, Sunday. It's a very short film, guys. It's like two minutes long. It's effectively a piece of poetry um, that uh, Lewis has shot a film to. And I'm going to play it to you now, but I'd love it, and I know Lewis would massively appreciate it. And if you want to get in his good books, do this. Um, go to his Vimeo channel or go to his Twitter channel. It's at Lewis AEA. Um, look for the film. Um, you'll find it on his timeline on Twitter. He's been tweeting about it this week. Give it a retweet, quote it, you know, put it out there. Let's get as many eyes on it as possible. Um, he's put his own money into it. People have put their own time into it. Um, it's a big passion project of his. Um, let's pay it back, you know. And then you never know. What a great, what a great excuse to tweet somebody high up in the industry. And he might be seeing you for a uh, clean break sometime in July. <laughs> you know, he might be starring opposite Sheridan Smith. If you don't uh, help him, maybe you won't get an audition. <laughs> Um, I'm only kidding. I'm sure he would uh, see you either way. But yeah, I'm going to play you this um, and then um, do let him know what you think of it. And if you don't like it, remember he said, be funny in your tweets and he'll still retweet you anyway. Um, so before I go as well, 9pm um, tonight, okay? I'm, I'm ending this early tonight so you've at least got 20 minutes to um, to go and get ready for Broadchurch at 9pm. Let's get Lewis some viewing figures as well. Um, so yeah, watch your ITV if you're in the UK, 9pm. Tweet at Lewis AEA during it. Let him know what you think. Um, don't get too distracted. Definitely watch it. But I think you'll love it. Who's been watching it so far? It's so good. It's like there's so many twists. It's the best series, I think. The best. I mean, series one was incredible. Like I say, series two kind of dipped. Series three is just so good. Every time I think I've figured out who's done it, there's a twist. Shamefully not, says James. Oh, you got to get it on catch up, man. I can't watch it, says Archie. Uh, love it, uh, says Gina. Gina's here. Good evening, Gina. Uh, I'm more into Line of Duty, says somebody. Line of Duty. Oh, you're absolutely stunning acting all round. Um, what uh, what they call the sophomore slump. Oh, for Series 2, yeah, probably is. Missed the last two, says Dawn. Um, catch up on it on, on ITV Player online. Um, it is great, you know. It's always a bit of a masterclass in acting, but it's just, um, I think from a writing perspective, Chris Chibnall, who wrote it, I'd love to get him on for an interview. I'm going to see if Lewis can sort that out for me. Um, oh, Trisha says she hasn't watched it. Give it a watch tonight, Trisha. Watch this episode. Um, and if you like it, go back and, and watch the story so far. So I watch season? No, you'd have to watch in season one at all. There's a couple of references to things that went on in season one and season three, but um, I won't worry about it. Season three is, is a completely new story. Uh, my friend was in it playing the arse taxi cab woman. Um, is that, was that Lucy who said that? Arsey taxi cab woman. Uh, she said, um, I love it. I've done since uh, first series, um, says Lee. I did a monologue from the first series. Awesome. Um, Ange with the hand. Uh, was Oh, Caroline. Was that, was that who, was, who she was playing in it? The arsey taxi woman. Amazing. Um, well, yeah, definitely watch it tonight, 9 p.m., 
um, and let me know what you think. Include me in your tweets as well. I want to know who's uh, who's seeing it, and I want to know what you think of Sunday Sunday as well. So my Twitter handle for acts on this is just at acts on this TV, same as it is on uh, Periscope. So at acts on this TV and at Lewis A E A. Okay, so uh, make sure you're following Lewis, following acts on this, and tweet us both. Um, let us know what you think. So has anybody got any uh, final questions? Anything to say before I play you the film? Give you 30 seconds. We'll call it a night. You can go and get yourself a brew and um, settle in for Broadchurch uh, episode six. It is great, honestly. I think you'll really, really enjoy it. Lenny Henry's in it. It's crazy, isn't it? You wouldn't think Lenny Henry, comedian, was going to be a good actor. Good actor. Um, Trisha's going to watch it. Cheers, says Steve. Um, yeah, it is really, really good. Enjoy the rest of your evening, Ross. Uh, this is Caroline, you too, Caroline. I can't find the search function on... Who, who, who said that? You can't find the search function on what? Uh, James says, where is it? What are you talking about, James? Let me know what you're talking about before I go so I can help you. He says he can't find something. The search function on Act on This, is that what you're talking about? On actsonthis.tv. If you click on the menu icon, which are the three little uh, lines, James, a menu will pop out from the left with all the links on to different areas of the site, and you'll see a search bar in the top. It's a white search bar at the very top of that menu. Type in whatever you want, and uh, you'll be able to find uh, you'll be able to find it. Uh, I missed the start. Did Lewis cast tonight's Broadchurch? Lewis would have had um, a lot to do with the casting, um, absolutely, but it will also be down to Victor Jenkins and Kelly Valentine Hendry, who cast Broadchurch, um, as well as the producers, the channel execs. A lot of people have to... Um, okay a casting on a show that that size thanks from california so inspiring thank you from watching in california massively appreciate you um come and watch next time i scope twice a week guys if you're on here for the first time once on a monday night at 9 p.m usually uk time on a wednesday night 9 p.m uk time as well um so yeah come and join us next time we'd love to uh we'd love to see you again um so james yeah actonthis.tv the search is in the menu mate if you want to search for lewis um you'll see a podcast well a full podcast i did a full podcast with lewis about an hour and 20 minutes long on actonthis.tv it's for premium members only but free free members can still listen to like 15 minutes of it i think um if you want to get a premium membership it's 10 quid a month it's so cheap it's like three cups of coffee a month if you're not prepared to invest that in your acting career i'd give up now um, but the money goes to charity, guys, to some great causes. Um, it supports the site, obviously, in running the site, but then each guest gets money to give to a charity. Lewis donated his to Crisis, I think, the homeless charity. Um, so uh, it's it's just a no-brainer. I don't, you know, I'm not plugging it just because it's my thing. Like I said, I don't make any money out of it, but when people are like, I don't have £2.50 a week to invest in my acting career, I'm like, you, you, you're mental. There's, you know, Because I think everybody, regardless, poverty-wise or not, just find two pound fifty from somewhere. Um, we can, and if you genuinely can't, if you're like, you know what, I'm literally homeless, or I'm gonna be if I pay this, email me. I'll give it you for free. If you're genuinely like so poverty stricken, you can't afford two pound fifty a week, and I mean seriously, like you are basically, you know, you have nothing. It's not a money spend. I'll just give it you. Um, can I give you the six pounds my dad making me pay for a broken plastic box? <laughs> there you go. Yep, absolutely. Honestly, you need you need to negotiate. You need to negotiate better with your dad and go. Listen, I'm not paying. I'm not paying the six pound for the broken box. I'm putting that into my acting career. <laughs> Definitely. Um, right, this is Sunday. Sunday, guys. Um, I really hope you enjoy this. And uh, yeah, tell him I've got it, Archie. It's fine. Um, and yeah, tell uh, Lewis what you think of uh, of this film, okay? At Lewis AEA and at Act On This TV. Here it is. I'll see you guys on Monday night for the next Periscope, 9 p.m. UK time. Um, until then, um, go smash it, guys. Do something great, all right? Okay, bye for now. Cheers, Gina. Thanks a lot. See you later, Archie. Um, watch this, though, before you go, all right? Check it out. Sunday, Sunday, half past nine. Headache breakfast, feeling fine. Check your kit bag, what's in it? Head off down to local pitch. Banter, banter, last night's news. Stretching, retching, bodies abused. Man just says who's playing today. Happily included, you're OK. Put on your shirt, shorts and socks. A ready rub to ease the knocks. Trot on out, wind, rain or snow. Limber up, ready, go. <laughs> Eagerly you join the fray, hoping for the win today. Running, jumping, kicking, calling, edging, chesting, sliding, falling. <laughs> 
suddenly half time's here. Manager's ready to bend your ear. Tactics sorted, you know the score. A drink of juice, it's back to war. <laughs> Muscles aching, legs feel used, keep on going, dare not lose. Not long left, time's running out, see an opening, give a shout. Find the ball at your feet, look up, hit it sweet, it's goalward bound. You say a prayer as a keeper dives in despair. Teammates and you jump for joy, pat your back, what a boy. Frantic minutes holding on, ref he blows, game is won. Onto the changing rooms full of cheer, onto the pub and full of beer. You may not see it on the telly, but each Sunday side has its pelly.